years after the Charlie Hebdo killings. The trial into the brutal massacre has now begun under tight security in Paris. It is the first trial in the history of France which will be filmed and will run for at least 10 weeks. Nearly 200 survivors of the three-day rampage are expected to testify. 14 accused face a variety of charges related to helping the perpetrators carry out the attacks that claimed 17 lives over three days in January 2015. They are accused of helping the Islamist gunmen kill people in and around the satirical weekly's offices in January 2015. The horrific spree of killings began on the 7th of January 2015 when two men armed with AK-47 rifles stormed the headquarters of the French satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo over what radicals termed a blasphemous cartoon. They ended up killing 12 staffers and guests as well as a policeman outside. The killings at the Charlie Hebdo office were carried out by brothers Said and Sheriff Kowashi, who were later killed two days after the attack. This attack was followed by more attacks the following days. While most of the alleged accomplices will stand trial in Paris, three of them are likely to be tried in absentia. The Charlie Hebdo attacks unleashed a massive wave of Islamist violence in the country. The satirical magazine marked the start of the trial by reprinting the controversial cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. The magazine said the controversial drawings belong to history and history cannot be rewritten or erased. Meanwhile, the French President Emmanuel Macron has refused to condemn the satirical newspaper for republishing the caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad. Macron defended the magazine's freedom of expression, saying it was not his place to pass judgment on the decision to republish the cartoons. Je pense qu'un président de la République en France n'a jamais à qualifier le choix éditorial d'un journaliste ou d'une rédaction. Jamais. Parce qu'il y a une liberté de la presse à laquelle vous tenez à juste titre profondément. Et ensuite, dans notre pays, depuis le début de la Troisième République, dont euh, vendredi, d'ailleurs, nous célébrerons les... un anniversaire important, on célébrera cet anniversaire des 150 ans de la République, il y a aussi en France une liberté de blasphémer, qui est attachée à la liberté de conscience. Et donc de là où je suis, je suis là pour protéger toutes ces libertés. And joining us live on the broadcast this minute for more perspectives is Farhat Kavad, retired professor at the Paris School for Advanced Studies, joining us live from Paris. Thanks very much for joining us here on Beyond World is One. Give us a sense of what the mood is like in the country now that the trial has begun. I mean things have changed in France, you know, since uh, five years ago, because uh, we have had, <coughs> of course, many social movements, and uh, we have had uh, <coughs> the uh, protest movements, uh, at least uh, three types of protest movements, and then now we have a coronavirus. So the mood is not absolutely not the same as it used to be five years ago. And <coughs> the, uh, the threat of terrorism has almost waned in a systematic manner with the disappearance of the Islamic State. So <clears throat> we are living in a society uh, in which uh, daily, <clears throat> daily behavior, daily life are totally different from what happened, you know, five years ago when <clears throat> Charlie Hebdo was attacked and then the uh, a small supermarket, you know, kosher supermarket in the vicinity of Paris uh, was <clears throat> also attacked. Uh, all in all, 17 people were killed, and uh, the three major attackers were also killed a few years, a few days afterwards. So that we are uh, nowadays uh, witnessing a trial in order to see what happened, and uh, in a way to make justice for those who died and for, for the survivors, as well as for the relatives uh, who have been suffering from uh, the, <clears throat> uh, the uh, killings and maimings uh, resulting from these um, major attacks. That's what uh, is happening, but the major, the main problem is that the three uh, killers uh, <clears throat> disappeared, I mean they were killed, uh, and uh, now 
the, out of the 14 who are being accused, you know, uh, three are missing. The two brothers, Bel Hussein, and then uh, the wife of one of the attackers, <clears throat> uh, Hayat Boumedian, uh, uh, all of them went to Syria. And uh, the brothers seem to have died there. And <clears throat> the wife of uh, uh, Koulibaly, uh, who uh, attacked the uh, Cochère supermarket uh, in, in in Vincennes, Port de Vincennes, uh, has disappeared. Nobody knows where she is, although there are guesses that she is alive. Professor, the magazine has said that the controversial uh, drawings belong to history and history cannot be rewritten or erased. Now, five years after the attacks, despite the objections, they have reprinted those controversial cartoons. What do you make of this move? I mean, the president cannot do anything else because legally um, blasphemy is uh, <coughs> allowed in France. So uh, he cannot oppose it. He cannot <coughs> condemn it or he cannot even uh, take sides uh, uh, officially. In that respect, what he has done is uh, in a way confirming the fact that uh, he, it is not up to him to decide whether or not the cartoons should be published or not. In that respect, I think... Uh, things are clear in France. You cannot, uh, you cannot prevent the publication of uh, the cartoons because legally uh, you don't have the right to do so. And if you do it, you're acting illegally. And uh, he would be uh, <coughs> attacked, you know, uh, on the judiciary level. So that, uh, in that respect, what he says is uh, <coughs> true. Uh, of course, you can uh, dislike the read publication of uh, these cartoons, and are, there are many people, you know, uh, who in France don't like it. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, they also reject and condemn formally the fact that uh, some people, uh, like those attackers, or those terrorists, you know, took the law into their own hands and uh, intended to punish. Uh, those publishers. Uh, that's not uh, acceptable in a democracy or in uh, any kind of uh, <clears throat> society in which law is binding. My guess is that uh, uh, he had no possibility whatsoever to oppose these, uh, the publication of these cartoons. Right. Security right. concerns remain at the same time. The Interior Minister of France, in fact, has said that there is a very high risk of a terror attack. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's true. One can say that the, those who published these cartoons in you, you know, were somehow uh, irresponsible. Uh, but uh, saying that, uh, there is no possibility whatsoever to <clears throat> oppose the publication. And, of course, the, the publication of these cartoons five years afterwards, you know, it is dangerous and it makes uh, uh, some people you know overexcited and sometimes uh, as it is the case nowadays in France and all over in Europe uh, there are people who have uh, major psychological problems and who might you know uh, react to it by attacking people uh, a major uh, <coughs> collective attack the, the way it happened you know five years ago is almost impossible nowadays. But uh, personal, I mean, lone wolves can do it, and it is very difficult for the police or for uh, uh, the military to stop it. it uh, it's true that the publication, you know, uh, increases the likelihood of uh, some type of attacks, you know, uh, all over France. Professor Kavad, appreciate very much your joining us on the broadcast with those perspectives, all eyes on that crucial trial which has now begun. We're leaving it there for the moment. Thanks very much once again.